I grew up in a very small town named Humboldt, Saskatchewan in Canada. And I always look back on my time in this small community with just really great memories, not only because of the amazing teachers I had, the amazing schools that I went to, but just my friends, my friend group who I connected with and thinking about how connecting with those people that I'm still connected with, many of them to this day, made me better. And one of the jokes I always say, because I always hear about people from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, Canada doing really, really well. And I always say excellence breeds excellence. That when you see people from your small community doing well, it pushes you to do better uh, yourself. It's something that I always think about. But when I was a kid, I remember that my parents wanted to move to a larger center. And I was really frustrated by the idea because I had such a good friend group there. I didn't want to leave. I was very comfortable. But as I got older, it bothered me that we didn't move. And the reason was because I felt that as a kid, and I didn't really realize it, that we were limited in some opportunities that you wouldn't have if you moved to a larger center. And that really bothered me. And it's something I think about often because I have the privilege of speaking to many small communities all over North America. And one thing that I'm really driven by is to ensure that all the technologies, all the access that we have is being utilized in these small communities that if I wanted to learn violin when I was a child, I don't know if anyone taught violin in my small town. But if I want to learn violin now, I could. No matter where I live, I could do it through uh, virtual. I could do it in per or I could do it in person. I could do it on my own time. I could do it with a tutor online. There's so many different opportunities. And I think that's something that really matters to me is that no matter where you live, that no kid should be limited based on the size of their community, because I know how important these schools and these communities are together, that they're connected with one another. And I thought about all of this as I was talking to the superintendent of Elysian Fields, Monica Simmons. She has so much energy. I loved talking to her. And one of the things that she's really passionate about is ensuring that even though she's in a small community that she grew up in, she knows very intimately, she wants to ensure that every kid that lives in that community has the same access and opportunity that any kid anywhere would have. And I know that is not always going to be true, but there's so much more that we can have access to living in these communities than we could when I was a kid. And are we leveraging that or pretending it doesn't exist? And that's one of the things that drives Monica. To be honest with you, it's one of the things that drives me. We had a great conversation about it. She has so much energy. She honestly should have her own show. I love talking to Monica. I can't wait to join her in a community, but you're going to love this podcast. You're going to feel energized after, I promise you. So welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Carlos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I have the superintendent of Leasing Fields, Monica Simmons, who I just Hi. had on my three questions podcast and I wasn't, I don't, I'm going to be, I'm going to admit it. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the energy. <laughs> I wasn't ready for you. And not that I wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready for you. Like you yeah. have energy and I love it. And I just feel like, I, I'm like, I'm ready to go. Like, I'm like, kind of like, I can't be sitting here anymore. Just talking to you. Hey, so, let's go. Yeah. So Monica, I'm, I'm actually, like I said, I meant I'm joining Monica's staff in July and I'm really excited about this. Monica talks so highly of her community and, uh, she's, she's taught, she's been a, a principal, she's a superintendent, absolutely amazing. And, uh, just, I don't like, you are a fireball. I don't, that's, <laughs> you yeah, are, thank you, I thank love you. it. But if you could just tell everyone about who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a, a really great place to start. Well, I am Monica Simmons. I am a very proud superintendent of Elysian Fields ISD. Um, I have been in this little jewel of a school district for 22 years. And like you, Mr. George said, I have taught a variety of subjects, content areas, and I absolutely love my little school district. You know, I like to pride ourselves and say that we are the best little school district in Texas. And so... Hey, I got a little competition there. So anyway, <laughs> that's a challenge to anybody who wants to accept it. Um, and then what I'll say is- and People aren't competitive I, in Texas at all either. So that what? will- <laughs> You know better. Hey, Friday night football says it all. Look, is there anything right. else to say? But Friday night football, Friday night football, man. 
But even hands down, when it comes to like curriculum, academics, anything dealing with the Legion Fields ISD, we are going to be competitive. I mean, just yesterday, our high school UIL team, they went over to Tatum and they won. We are the district <laughs> champs. Like I can't even count the number of years because it's been just continuously year after year. And so I'm just um, saying, we got kids in Fort Worth today, they're competing at TSA, T TSA competition. And so, I mean, we just do lots here in Elysian Fields. I love it. Hey, so tell me, tell me, like you've been there, as you said, you've been there for a while and you know, it's a, it's a smaller community, but like what, you know, and sometimes there's this perception that, you know, small community, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you in Texas is going to be like, Hey, they're, they're doing stuff like the same way they've been doing it years ago. So what are some, like, what are some of the things that you've seen of change in your community? Oh my gosh. Okay. You are That's perception, really, right? Really, well, well, I was going to, now let's see. Why are you not mine? No, mine. You're about to get me in trouble. Okay. Because uh, truth be told for many, 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 many years, we have been doing things the same way. So me being the little second year superintendent, even though I've been here for 22 years, right. I've actually been flying under the radar and minding my own business. Why they moved me up here to central office, I have no idea. Right. Because let me just say these last two years, I've kind of been pushing and pushing, saying, hey, guys, we got to get to 2023 standards. Hey, we got to move to 2024. Right. We're a little bit behind the times. And so we've actually been changing lots of things, which can be good, but it can right. also be bad because people do not like change. But me, myself, I am a change agent. Yep. If you're putting me in that position, I'm not going to stay stagnant and I'm not going to expect the people under me to stay stagnant because that's not what's best for kids. Education is constantly changing and evolving. And I'm so sorry, but hey, it is time for us to <laughs> run and catch up with the times because we have been basically walking. And yeah. so now I have slowly started to take my staff and students and community to a light jog. Look, I did say a light jog. We're not full on fledged sprinting. We are light jog. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little terrified what light jog means to you. So I'm just, oh my gosh. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. So, so, oh my gosh. Like when I tell you there have been mm. so many things right now, currently, I will say that my, my school board, they've actually called a May bond election. And yeah. so that's something that's taking place. You know, I can't come in on that too much. Got to stay in my lane, <laughs> but, but what I will say is, you know, we're trying to get our facilities up to par right. um, because we do want that to be something that because our, our school district here in Elysian Fields, which you're going to see when you visit, this is the community. Yeah. There are no exquisite stores, restaurants, anything like that. What you get is you get the district, you get the community. We have a Dollar General. We got a Doug's General store. So that's it. Yeah. And so with that being said, you know, everything that we do is very, very vitally important because everybody's looking at it. And so yeah. we have a district Facebook page. We try to make sure we're we're constantly sharing relevant content. We've changed the way that we monitor progress, what that looks like. We're putting new systems in place because mm -hmm. data really hasn't been tracked the way that I think it needs to be tracked. Right. And so just working with my administrators, making sure that everybody sees the vision. You know, our vision is we are preparing students to Today for success tomorrow. So with that being said, yeah. what does that look like? Okay. How do we monitor that we are really taking our students where they're at and moving them, yeah. you know, to make sure that when they leave the Legion Fields ISD, they're going to be ready for their future because that is our mission. You know, we want them to excel and be productive citizens. And we want them to say, Hey, I came from Legion Fields ISD. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, you know, yeah. um, web designer, whatever their vision may be. I don't really care, but I want them to be able to be proud of the education that they received. And so, yeah, I have kind of kicked a hornet's nest. You're going to get right. me in trouble. So I'm going to behave on that question. Okay. Well, you know, and the, the, I think that's a really important aspect is that wherever you go to school, you want to have that pride in. Yeah. I, I still, I like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 49 this week. So I Happy still, I, thank you. I still look back at my, school experience with great pride and talk about how much we excelled because of what we learned in our school, because of the teachers that we had. Right. And one of the things that I really noticed with you, and I, I, I noticed this with you, I know you're trying to move people forward and continuously grow and get better. Cause by the way, I can tell us in two seconds because you expect that of yourself as well. You're not asking okay. anybody to do anything that you're not willing to do because sometimes 
Um, you know, I've seen this at conferences I speak at. People are like, hey, we want to move to the future. We want to do this. And then I'll say, challenge them. I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but it's like, well, you just told everybody. So like, and they got to see you doing it first. So I like when you see this. But one of the things that, you know, I was really captivated by and, and really talk about that community uh, excellence, there, there is, a, there is a amazing relationship and community that's been built already there. And so like, Correct. why is that, you know, why is that relationship piece, why is that community piece so important to the work that you're doing right now? Because I, I think sometimes people get lost in all the visioning, all the academics, but if you don't have people and you don't have the support, if you don't have trust, you never Correct. get that place anyway. So why is that so important to what you do in Legion Field? Hey, I just think it's important for parents to trust us as far as, mm -hmm. hey, we have their pride and joys here yep. every day in our facilities. And so with that being said, to me, it's super important that we have these relationships. Like it cannot just be the school constantly mm -hmm. calling the parent being like, oh, little Johnny, little Susie, they're in trouble. It can't always be about the negative. It has to also be about the positive. And so our campuses, they have to be inviting. They have to be yeah. welcoming. Because like I said, this is all we have. And so out here, I have to make sure that my parents know, hey, when you drop your kid off, they have the very best teacher. They have the teacher who is qualified, certified to teach that content area. There is not just a body in that class. They're right. also not just here dibbling and dabbling for eight hours a day. Like they are actually being taught something meaningful because, you know, curriculum is important, whether we, we want to admit that or not. Some people don't think that it is, but I, I don't know. And it also doesn't just need to be a, hey, you come and sit and you get. Okay, I need, I need a little more hands-on. I need this to also be a, a place of learning where students feel like their voice is also important yep. and that they also contribute to the educational setting. And so just for me, just thinking about community is family, family is school. So it all just aligns for me here in Elysian Fields, I State. You know, the, the, like growing up in a small town, you know, okay. like, first of all, I... I have this affinity to small towns in the sense that I grew up in one and I felt that I didn't have the same amount of opportunity that someone in the city had. And it, honestly, that was true. That was actually true. true. And it, it still might be true in some sense today, but not as true as it was. was. So e even, even in your community, I don't know if there's any other schools, private schools, you know, whatever. So there's none of that. But no. there's always a virtual option. There's always something else that kids can do. There is, and like, homeschooling, so, yeah. So that, that's actually something that, you know, people have to always be cognizant of. Like, would people, do pick, people pick you by default or by choice? Because that, because it matters. Like, hey, we want to create the best opportunities for your kids. And even if you feel there's another choice, we would want to be your first choice if you had all the choice in the world. But I think the other thing too, and I think this is what is really compelling to me, I if you in a small community, if you don't embrace opportunities that exist in our world today, you are limiting kids to the same limits that I had growing up in a small town. Like, hey, if I want right. to learn piano, but there's no piano teacher here, right? Then, then too bad, right? But now it's not right. too bad. But if I don't know that don't have access to that. And I think that that is really important to me is that that it, we can live wherever we want in the world and still right. have the same opportunities as someone who lives in a larger center, right? You know, right. it might look different, but we still have that same opportunity. And so I think right. that's what's really compelling to me is that notion is opening those doors for kids that maybe weren't open for us when we were kids. So my, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this and it's gonna put, kind of put me on the spot. Um, so you asked me to join you all. Yes. So, so this is kind of, this is, and I, like we, I, we're sharing this before I come there. So this is like a little bit of accountability. So if I'm to work with your staff and that's to be a successful day, what does that look like to you? Oh my gosh. What that looks like for me is number one, I need everybody to be on time. I have this, I'm, I'm not even going to play with you. Right. Look, I have a thing with time and this is my philosophy. If I'll be on time. To, I'll just say, no, I'll be on time. But I'll tell my staff that too, because to me, just being on time sets the entire mood for the yep. day. I hate when you see people dwindling in. To me, if you're going to be late, just don't show up. It, <laughs> it's like a pet peeve. 
of mine. I, I had it very well internally, but internally I'm really, really blowing steam, but yeah. I have that. Okay. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but what that looks like for me is it's going to be you there more so facilitating lots of open, transparent conversation. I don't want it to be a, a situation where you come, you present, and you're just up there talking and sharing for hours on end. Yeah. There have to be chunks in there where there are lots of two-way conversations. Yep. I can envision some group work, some collaboration taking place over here on this end and really allowing the, the leadership team and the, you know, the staff members to dive deep, to really think, like, I don't want it to be just something that's surface level. Right. Like I really want for the things that are shared to be thought provoking and to be things, like you said, holding them accountable. Okay. Yeah. If you share this, if you say this, I want to see what that looks like in your classroom on your campus. So I just really mm -hmm. want it to be, I want big chunks of takeaways, you know, things yeah. that they can take back, they can apply, they can utilize. I want there to be lots of aha moments because sometimes, you know, people are doing a good job or maybe they're struggling with something and it really has it hasn't resonated, but maybe there's going to be something you're going to say, or yeah. maybe there's going to be something a colleague that's going to say that's going to make them say, you know what, I'm really good at this, or how oh, I could have I tried this. So just that that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see very, very active. Like you said, we're not sitting yeah. and getting that's not what yeah. we're doing with Monica Simmons. We're gonna be moving around the room and we're gonna be doing a little shuffling, even if we're two-stepping, play some music, make it, <laughs> make it fun, you know, make it engaging. I don't want All it to right. be boring. Now, if you put me to sleep, I'm gonna get you. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, and but, if, if I put you to sleep and I'm late, then I'm like, no. Oh, okay. and you're late. Oh, you go be. <laughs> I, but, I'm almost tempted just to show up late just to see what happens. Just oh, like, boy, just I, like, I want to see how you is, invoke. <laughs> I'm asking you. I would never be that late. That is not what you want to say. No, really, I don't want to see it. I, like, I'm terrified of really being wrong. Like you do not want to see the she devil. I'm just, just don't bring I the don't, she devil. In. I don't. You're right. I do not. Like that. That day. But that is more or less what you know. What I nah. want to see. I want it to see a very engaging, collaborative day where people are sharing and they're walking away with tools and they're just you know they're excited about being there. You know so that I I love this and I I, I love that because. I could tell, first of all, you you truly believe that because like there's a lot of people who can say that, but then at the end of the day, it's like they really I want have that. Big dreams, like I have great big yeah. dreams. Like our yeah. theme for this current school year right now that we're currently in is dream big. That's because I'm always yeah. dreaming big. I know. I think I push that down their throat constantly. Dream big, dream big. Right. If you have no dream and you're just sitting there right. wandering through life, hello, nothing ever is going to happen. You got to be optimistic. And so that that's yeah. my motto, which people are always like, she's so positive. Why is she always so positive? Well, my God, I'm not going to be negative Nancy. That's what are we not right. going to do. So I have big dreams for this little bitty school district. I just need to really, really, really get everybody on board with seeing how huh. unbelievable, awesome Elysian Phil's ISD is. But I, I can't. It. Cannot dream that and believe that all by myself. It takes the whole team believing that. Well, I I love this. So this is totally up my alley. And <laughs> I, I think I think the the thing that I do this every time when I'm doing a workshop is I'll share some information. You know, like because you, you know you're bringing me in to share some of my ideas too, and you know get different perspectives. But one of the things I always say is like, hey, let me know what questions you have, any ideas you have, but also challenge me. So if you don't agree with something I said, I want you to push back, but do not push back at the end of the day in the parking lot with your buddies when I'm gone. Don't be that person. Don't, don't like, well, that guy, no, 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 do it, do it. Cause I, and it's actually, it's not just because I, I like a little back and forth. Like I like that, but it's, it's also because I'm trying to grow from the process as well. I'm, I'm not coming in. You said this earlier. I'm not coming in saying, I know all the answers if you right. just follow me, but I want to know, like, cause something that I say might work great in this area, but uh, Hey, here's why I wouldn't work here. And tell me that, tell, let's have a conversation and maybe we need to modify something. Maybe I need to totally change my viewpoint, but right. that willingness to, to ask for pushback is also something I'm trying to model right. um, for leaders is saying like, Hey, you know, you, you say you want to grow, but then you're actually not creating a space where people challenge you. So Correct. grow, challenge me, but you got to do the same thing with your staff. You got to do the same thing with your communities. That's so right. You'll love it. Like, love I it. cannot wait. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that's a huge, and like I said, it's, 
I've, I've become, be, since I've really kind of embraced that, and I can't say it's been like, it's been for the last 10-ish years. Okay. I, I have just would say I have grown tremendously because I want to push back. I'm like, uh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Like I was way off there and you, you modify and you figure things out. Like I can actually right. point to parts of my workshop that I'm like, oh yeah, I totally changed my mind here when this person said that. Like I remember yeah. moments. So I think that's really powerful. I know you're going to share something. Well, no, look, I was just going to say, I would just like the idea of them being able to share. Yeah. You know, all I ever hear is they're, they're intimidated by the little lady. Why? I am five. Why? Why would you be intimidated by <laughs> I, I, I can mean, see. I, can, I, I am. Mean, I get it. I'm, I'm a little intimidated. No, you do not get it. You were not supposed to say that. But that's what right. I kind of hear. Well, they're intimidating. I'm like, spit it out. I am an open book. If you come in, now you may not like what I say, right. but I'm going to tell you. But I mean, I would rather them come and tell me than all the whisper. That drives me yeah. right you know what I'm saying, but anyway, another conversation, another question. The 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 thing I used to say to myself all the time: I can't solve problems I don't know exist. So if exactly. a problem, let me know. So let me know. Right. So because then, because if you talk behind my back about it, it's not going to solve. No, nope. make you feel it's good not. temporarily, but long term, it's not going to help. So yeah, not going to challenge, challenge mm -hmm. me. Let's let's see if we can figure something out. The, exactly. the other thing you said, and I I think I've been, I think we are a little bit the same person. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary. <laughs> now you like me. I know. Because I've been, you know, like, oh, it's super positive, toxic positivity, all that garbage. And like, it's usually from super negative people, by the way. Correct. The reality, the reality of it is, it's not that I don't know issues exist. We, Correct. You know this as well. Yes. But I'm always finding solutions. That's the goal. Like, and I always say this. If you complain about a problem, you complain all you want. And then when you're done complaining, guess what? It's still a problem. It's still so a problem. We still, we still got to figure out a way forward. Right. I, think, I think that to me is something that really matters. So I, I know you took time out of your day to be here as superintendent and I know you're super busy. So, um, I, I am like way more <laughs> to, I was already kind of excited, but now I'm like, yeah, I can't believe this is April. I don't know what I'm gonna do for a few months waiting to come out. Hey, there. You just wait. I'm telling you, you just wait till you're here in person, but look, I'm telling Long you time. to tomorrow, be here you know in person. I'll be early. Trust me. I'll be super <laughs> early. I am not going to Yeah. You trust me, I am not going to be late. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Monica, I hope everyone, please make sure you connect with Monica because oh, yeah. absolutely, I'm, I, I, I just want to pull myself out. I'm just going to cut out all my parts and just, just this is a Monica show. I love it. No, don't do that. All right. All right. Well, hey, everyone. Monica, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank everyone, thanks so, so much for listening. What a, what a wonderful day. I, what a wonderful opportunity to talk to Monica. I hope you learned as much as I did. Take care.